Now that I have my e-bike built, I really wanted to see if I can solar charge my e-bike because that'd be pretty cool. It'd be fully, fully renewable. Uh, so I bought a 100 watt panel online for $55 and a power station online for about $80, a refurbished one. And I wanted to see if I can get it all together such that my e-bike will no longer require right, an so outlet. I'm just gonna connect and undo these little zip ties. And we'll connect these before we bring it up to the roof. These guys. I don't think these are directional. They're supposed to be uh, wire tight, so see if they actually are later and then we'll connect this end to the machine so let's uh, carry this uh, let's test it out on the ground and then we'll carry it up to the roof all right we got this temporary laying on the ground and uh, we'll connect it to the 12 volt input Here. And it automatically turns on. So let me see if I can get this into a place. So right now there's uh, about 20, 30 watts of input. I'm not sure if, let me see if I can record it closer. So the battery comes 59% charged. It's pretty windy out today, but you can see um, that there is uh, 47 watts of input. And this is pretty direct sunlight right now, and it will take uh, about 1.7 hours to charge. That's pretty fast. All right, so let's uh, throw the panel up in the roof and uh, see what happens. All right, so we got it all plugged in, just running around the door for now. We're gonna put in a more permanent solution. But if we go out here, you can see the panel just sitting there up there. I put a little bricks there just in case it stops. It's a north facing wall. So north facing wall right now, this is uh, late March, getting about 75 watts out of the, uh, out of the panel just sitting there. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm gonna go out to get some lunch right now. It says about one hour left for for uh, for it to charge. So we'll see if it's charged when I get back from lunch. All right. All right, I'm back from lunch. It's about an hour. And input 71 watts, output's 24 watts. I'm guessing that means my computer is almost fully charged. And uh, now 1.2 hours until it's fully charged. Battery life has gone up a little bit. Cool. Now we're gonna work on securing it to uh, to the roof. So that's gonna be the next step. Okay, it's a couple hours later. Battery is fully charged. The computer is no longer. It's still plugged in, but it's no longer. No longer charging, so it's pulling zero volts. It's kind of amazing. And the output right now is 40 watts from the solar panel. It's pretty overcast right now, and the panel is pretty much no longer in the sun. So, all right. So this is how we're gonna tie it on. You can see there's a nut to give it that spacer for that drip edge, and then Simpson strong tie followed by a uh, washer gasket. And I found that it was easier to drill a hole underneath the, uh, the shingles. So I did that and then I curled the wire. So here's the panel facing self, looking very straight. And uh, I'm gonna tie it on with two of these guys. And uh, here's the other one and it looks good. All right, gonna warm up the soldering iron here because we're gonna build an extension cord. It turns out it's way cheaper on the internet to uh, 
buy these uh, connectors and to buy the extension cords to the point where I feel like one can actually make money doing this. Um, turns out the, uh, so I decided to use this thing. So this thing is generating 14, this soldering iron is only using 14 watts of energy. That's actually pretty impressive. All right, well, let's see here. Is it getting hot? It's getting hot. All right, so here we go. We're gonna make these connectors. The most unfortunate thing about this is that the only charger I have for the e-bike is an AC charger. So it's going from DC on the panel to AC in the charger, back to DC in the battery. That can't be efficient. We'll have to sort that out later. All right, so we got it plugged in. Stupid AC-DC conversion. 27 watt in, 166 watt out. So we're gonna drain this whole battery, it looks like. Cause there's more coming, going uh, to the, more going to the bike than to, than here. So we're gonna see what happens here. I don't really think very much, but we'll see. So it hasn't quite been one hour yet, but you can see the sun is about to go over that building. And once it goes over that building, we're not gonna get much energy out of this thing. So we're gonna go check on the e-bike. Fifty-five percent. So the sun is charging the thing. Well, the battery, sun's charging the battery. Battery's charging the thing. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, it's nighttime. The input is one watt from the panel, and there's no output, so the thing's turned off. Interesting. All right. Well, let's go see where we're at. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, wait. We have to turn this on. Okay. And then we're going to see where it is. 79%. All right. So we're going to leave this plugged in and see what happens overnight. All right. So everything worked exactly as I intended. Um, the solar panel even sometimes would give out more wattage than it's rated you see in this picture it was giving 123 watt at one point which is really nice uh, the unfortunate thing is that if you have something plugged into the power station and it drains all the battery what happens is that the power station will turn off and in order for you to get it to start charging again you have to turn it off and on so i essentially have to watch it uh, in order for it to charge my e-bike because my e-bike battery is bigger than the battery in the power station. So a bit of a inconvenience, but overall good experience. And I learned a lot about uh, solar panels. So my next project might be powering my entire house. Who knows? <laughs>